Welcome back. In this video, we will model the rest of the P&L parameters. They are already included in our P&L assumption sheet in order to save some time. You can take a look at how each of these items is linked to the source materials through the links in the completed file, which you can download from the course materials section. Let's copy this block of cells for the items below, as it indicates we will not use these cells in order to build scenario hypotheses. The scenario hypotheses are only for the future. The best approach when you have to carry out multiple repetitive tasks in Excel is to think whether there is a way which can facilitate your work. Good Excel users do not necessarily type a lot. They tend to use multiple times what they have typed once. In this example, the first block was something which we had already done and reused again for the other parameters. Is there something else that we have already done and can reuse? Yes, the choose function is suitable for copying downwards, as we have the same blocks as the one for revenues. So let's copy the function for the rest of the parameters. What we have to do now is to assign values in the three cases for the rest of the parameters and decide how we will model them. Other revenues is an item which could be related to operating or non-operating activities. Given that we are not sure of its nature and its small amount, it might be reasonable to hypothesize a flat development throughout the forecast period. We'll have 0% for all five years in the three case scenarios. In order to calculate the final figures for other revenues, we can copy the formula from above, which calculated revenues based on their annual growth. Cost of goods sold is one of the material items for this business. It is given by the sum of raw materials and direct costs. As we said earlier, Cheese Co.'s business requires a large amount of raw materials, milk, and they represent a significant margin of total revenues. Let's use as a driver for this item the percentage weight of COGS on revenues. As a proxy for the future, we need to calculate historical figures. COGS amounted to 76 to 80 percent of revenues in the previous three years. Modeling cost of goods sold in this way allows the item to follow the development of revenues and remain in line with historical evidence for the business. Therefore, in G21, which will be the 2014 figure for COGS, we will have the number of revenues in 2014 by the percentage weight of COGS on revenues. Based on historical figures, we can assign the following values. 76% for our optimistic case, 78% for our base case, and 80% for the worst case scenario. It is unrealistic to hypothesize that the percentage of COGS will change throughout the forecast period without much deeper analysis, which often requires access to management. This is how we made a forecast for the development of COGS. In our next video, we will see how to model OPEX and DNA. Thank you for watching.